tonight on 8 out of 10 Jack, the king of Jack, Richard Madeley, comedian and athlete Mel Gedroyd, and their team captain, Sean Locke. Facing them tonight, pop world puppet, Simon Amstel. From the sketch show, Lee Mack. And their team captain, Dave Spikey. Ladies and gentlemen, here's your host, Jimmy Carr. Well, thanks very much. Welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, 1 in 12 school children don't know who's on top of Nelson's column? The clue is in the name, Trevor Nelson. 32% of old people don't want to live. I tell you what, old people, you're in luck. <laughs> 80% of women find men with cool cars attractive, which goes some way towards explaining why the last pope got so much poontang. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and we've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. We didn't ask about the biggest or the most important news stories, just the things people had actually been chatting about. And it's our panellists' jobs to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Sean. Well, I imagine they've been talking about the announcement of the Live 8 gig, which is uh, due to coincide with the G8 summit, isn't it, in July? Yeah, the G8 summit where the eight most powerful nations all get together in a room and go, everything's going great, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know what the ninth most powerful country is, but I bet they're livid. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and they're, doing, they're doing a big... Uh, Bob Geldof's doing a big gig to draw attention to this, and he's been in some trouble with uh, encouraging school kids to take a, a day off school. Is he encouraging day. them to take Mondays off, by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> he's called for a million people to march to Edinburgh. I mean, I think... You know, this is a country facing a massive obesity crisis. I mean, getting someone to march to their news agents <laughs> is <laughs> impossible enough. But most of, the, most of the kids who bunk off go, yeah, I'm going to Edinburgh, and they won't. They're going out to the park and try and get a bottle of cider, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Put the hooded tops up and throw scaffold tubes at hearses. That's what they do. Well, let's have a look and see if Live 8 is up on our list. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. You're absolutely right. 48% of people were talking about Live Aid. It was a huge talking point this week. I don't know if you've seen the incredibly powerful commercial where a child dies every time famous people click their fingers. I couldn't help thinking, stop clicking your fingers. <laughs> Last night I went to a restaurant. I killed two kids just getting the bill. <laughs> it's been claimed this week that the Make Poverty History wristbands are made in China by children. Of course, they might not be children. They are a lot shorter over there. <laughs> My brother had the anti-racism uh, wristbands, which is, you know, the black one and the white one. The black one fell off, um, so now he's a racist. Uh... <laughs> Dave, over to you. What do you think people have been talking about this week? Big Brother um, is back. It's sort of indicative of, of, what, of the, the way the programme's going, that the second most important statistic they give you now, when it comes on, is the bus size. It's the breast size, isn't it? It's like Saskia, 34 double F. <laughs> but they don't do it for... <laughs> they don't do it for the blokes, do they? They don't do Anthony, three and a half inches, on the slack. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen much of it because I've been quite busy this week counting my rice. <laughs> but <laughs> the, the bits I've seen, I mean, you, you were talking there about the amount of large breasted ladies. I was watching under the sound down, it looked like Benny Hill made a rap video. <laughs> 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 it's fantastic. <laughs> well, let's have a look and see if Big Brother is yeah. on our list of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> it is. Big Brother was always. Let's face it, Big Brother was always going to be in our top five. Uh, they've introduced infrared cameras in the house. We're excited about the prospect of some nocturnal activity. Bill Oddie hopes to see a badger. <laughs> Sean, back over to you. What do you think the nation have been discussing this week? Well, the bumblebee crisis. What now? What? The bumblebee... <laughs> <laughs> Shit! Don't panic! <laughs> Don't panic! No Calm one down. panic! Calm down, it's... it's... What are you talking about? <laughs> what bumblebee crisis? You don't know. No. In the paper when it says BB crisis, you know that's Big Brother, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Female bumblebees, which apparently are the, are the zealous, hard-working sex, are turning into fat, lazy males. 
Um, <laughs> this is a crisis because although bees don't, bumblebees don't make honey, they do a lot of bumbling. And um, bumbling levels have reached a record low, and it is a, a real problem. So what you're saying is there's a lot of lady bees turning into lady boys. Exactly. <laughs> so bumblebees, you're saying, don't make honey? No. Right, they no. just bumble around. They just bumble, and neither do they sting. What do they do? Little fat, lazy shits. <laughs> <laughs> Am I dreaming, or is Richard Maley talking about bees? <laughs> I can check if that's in the top five. I don't think it probably is. Well, I think people have got to be talking about the uh, shock horror news that Coldplay have been knocked off the number one spot by... Jack Shearer. <laughs> crazy Frog. That's more annoying than the Crazy Frog. <laughs> but you don't have to pixelate her genitals. So... <laughs> <laughs> Chris Martin has said he wants to catch him and eat his legs. But he's, he's never going to do it. In the video, there's some guy in a rocket bike chasing him. He can't do it. <laughs> what, so you're saying the crazy frog? It's got to be there. It's Let's see if it's there. Yeah. Yes! <laughs> yes, the crazy frog was the most talked about thing this week. The creator of the crazy frog has said, and I quote, I would never have it on my phone. If it came on the television, I would turn it off. Even before it went on the website, I began to hate myself. He added, bing, 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 Two more to get. Come on, Dave. Is it anything to do with the fact that the postal service have had the prices of stamps frozen? I mean, I'm not being unsympathetic, but why should they raise the price of stamps? Because what do the actual postal service do, right? All they do is they collect a letter from a box Right, they stick it in a sorting office, then somebody else takes it to a train station who takes it up north to Newcastle, and then another bloke picks that up from there, takes it to another sorting office, he'll then sort it out again, and then he'll give it to another man who gets on a bicycle and rides for four miles on his bike in the rain and delivers it to someone in the middle of nowhere, right? And they want 22p for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rip off, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> I was intrigued by this, I don't know if you saw this, that Tesco are now... You can get funerals at Tesco, which is fantastic, isn't it, really? You can get funerals at Tesco? Oh, shop till you drop, yeah. <laughs> what is it? Oh! Uh, that's not one of the, uh, the five big talking points this week. I'll tell you what, we've got uh, two more to get. Fingers on buzzers. Buzz in if you think you know what the people have been talking about this week. Yeah, okay. Buzz. Sean? I think it has to be the uh, rejection of the European Constitution yeah. by the French and the Dutch have said no, non and ni. I mean, the great okay. thing is that, no, we don't have a referendum, because has anybody any idea what you'd be voting for? I've got no idea yeah, at you all. Vote... Does anybody yeah, have any idea? Yeah, it's obvious. You're voting about whether Liverpool should be in Europe. No. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's have a look and see if the uh, European uh, vote was up there. Yes, it was. Hey. Well, I think... no. uh, Rod Stewart is to be a dad again, uh, age 60. Obviously, when his kid has their 21st birthday, Rod will be dead. <laughs> Going out with one of her friends? Yes. <laughs> yeah, Dad, you come to my 21st, you bet your ass I am, yeah. <laughs> 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 the best age to have kids, though, 60s and 70s, isn't it, really? Because you've, you've got to get up two or three times a night anyway. <laughs> no, that, that didn't make, didn't make the list of them. Japanese uh, soldiers thought World War II was still going on. They emerged somewhere. Oh, yes. I can tell you that was the eighth most talked about thing this week. Two Japanese servicemen have emerged from the jungle and are said to be shocked that the war is over. They were even more shocked when Ant and Dec said, let's have a look at some of your funniest moments. <laughs> You've got one more thing to get. It's, Richard. It's actually Cole, isn't it? Um, Tell me the story. Uh, he's, uh, he's, he's committed the heinous crime of actually having a cup of tea with uh, some, somebody from another club. For this, he's been fined £100,000. It wasn't the first time it happened as well, because he was tapped up by Newcastle as well, apparently, just before. Why does it matter? I mean... Well, that would never work, because you can't sell coal to the Geordies. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey. Thank you. Hey. Thank you. Let's have a look if it's there. It is. <laughs> right, that's the end of the first round, and we've established that the British public talk more about animated ringtones than the European Constitution. Good on you. <laughs> I can also tell you that Sean, Richard and Mel have uh, four points, and Dave, Simon and Lee have one point.
The next round is called The Pole with a Hole. We've looked through hundreds of surveys, past and present, from around the world and unearthed some fascinating facts. Unfortunately, each statistic is missing one salient piece of information, so it's up to our panellists to fill in the gaps. Dave, your team first. I can't tell you the source because it will give it away. 7% oh. of UK kids don't know what. Shit. <laughs> The correct way to prepare crack. <laughs> <laughs> that if they eat another chocolate biscuit, they'll turn into a chocolate biscuit. <laughs> um, th it is. It is about um, food. What a carrot is. Very close. Yeah. Uh, what a carrot isn't. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to have to give you this one. It's seven percent of UK kids don't know how to eat an orange. What? In front of me. Seven percent of UK kids don't know how to eat an orange. Cover it in breadcrumbs and deep fry it. They'll get the hang of it. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, most kids get all the orangey goodness they need from Bacardi breezes. <laughs> Sean Steen, uh, this is from a study by Leicester University from March this year. On average, policemen spend two minutes per day what? Playing with their Nino. <laughs> um, arguing over who's going to be bad cop. <laughs> Spend two minutes per day tampering with evidence. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just for old times' sake. Is it boiling a really soft egg? <laughs> no, the answer is, in fact, on average, policemen spend two minutes per day taking statements. Dave, Simon and uh, Lee, this is from the Department of Health survey from last December. Southerners are five times more likely to what than Northerners? Support Manchester United. <laughs> Celebrate Pim's o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Book a flight from Gatwick. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. It's to do with an emergency. Five times more likely to not have an emergency. <laughs> it wasn't that much of a clue. <laughs> Call an ambulance. You're absolutely right. It is dial 999. Yeah. My neighbour had a heart attack, right, fell on his hamster, and the RSPCA got there before the ambulance. <laughs> Sean's team, you're next. Um, this is according to a survey by the Ramblers Association from this March. 69% of people think that encountering what would spoil their enjoyment of a country walk? Talking sheep. <laughs> Especially a really dull one. <laughs> if a sheep could talk, it'd be quite boring, wouldn't it? Yeah, he's just been standing here all day. <laughs> Bloody boring. <laughs> Over there yesterday. Great. <laughs> a badger the size of a horse. <laughs> that sounded really rude the way you said it. <laughs> oh, she had a badger the size of a horse. <laughs> I keep forgetting Richard Maidley's there, and it's like a little surprise every five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> what would spoil a country walk? Come on, just think about it logically. A bull. The road. Oh, elect electric pilot. Yeah, you're along no. the right. Motorway. Cars. Well, you're absolutely right. I'll give you that. It's vehicles. Cars. What? <laughs> Dave, um, your team. Uh, next one's from the British Attitude Survey, December 2004. By the year 2015, half the world's population will what? Have been evicted from the Big Brother house. <laughs> <laughs> will have had a go on Titmus. <laughs> I've read the Da Vinci Code. Reading the Da Vinci Code is kind of along the same lines. Oh. They will be able to read the Da Vinci Code. Speaking English. You're absolutely right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sean, yours is the next one from a survey by Surrey University, featured in the Daily Mail in March. 17% of British women are kept awake each night by what? 17% of British men. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Maidley. <laughs> yeah, they're there tossing yeah. and turning. Yeah. <laughs> is it ecstasy? <laughs> I think it's a gentle but insistent prodding in their lower backs. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's quite an obvious one. The children. Is it snoring? You are absolutely 100% oh. right. 17% of British women are kept awake by their partner snoring. If your partner does snore, one way you can deal with it is to gently roll them over. Do it three times, they're out the bed, problem solved. <laughs> So, at the end of that round, it's eight points for Sean's team and two points for Dave's team. 
Our next round is face-off, a head-to-head -head challenge between our two team captains. Sean and Dave have six well-known faces in front of them. Prince Harry, David Blunkett, Pope Benedict XVI, Wayne Rooney, Sherry Blair and Chewbacca the Wookiee. We ask the British public to rank these people in order on a series of questions. All Sean and Dave have to do is guess who came top. The first question is, who would you most like to have on your pub quiz team? Who got the most votes, Dave? I think the <coughs> pub would be good, because he'd be in the toilets texting God, wouldn't he? Like, um... <laughs> Plague of Frogs, any idea? Any idea? I'm thinking Exodus. Um, <laughs> which it is, actually. <laughs> um, you're going to go with the Pope? Well, he is infallible. It's not a bad okay. choice. Well, only if you're a Catholic and you believe that. I'm not Catholic. I was. I was at confession, and I thought, hold on a minute, I'm in a little wooden box, Telling dirty stories to an Irishman who never had sex. <laughs> this is bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I have actually met the Pope. And you know that little white thing on his head? Yeah. If you push that down and twist it, he's full of sweets. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so who are you going to go for, Sean? Well, I think I think I would go for Prince Harry because I think he'd lull the opposition into a full sense of security. They think, Harry's here, they're bound to lose, he's an idiot. <laughs> but then again, that would be a problem because he is an idiot. <laughs> oh, I'll go for Harry anyway. You're going for Harry, OK. Well, I can tell you that Harry got 15% of the vote, so mm. you win that because Pope Benedict XVI only got 9% of the vote. Oh, wow, nice one. <laughs> it's surprising that the Pope came behind Chewbacca. It's very rare in a pub quiz that, in my experience, at least, that the answer is... <laughs> It depends where you drink, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> OK, Sean, this is to you. Who would cope best in prison? If the Pope was in prison, he wouldn't be the Pope anymore, would he? You know, I imagine they'd strip him of his Pope. How, how would he have got in prison? Yeah. What could he have done? Take the Pope-mobile down the pub. <laughs> <laughs> Drive back hammered with his head sticking out of that glass dome. <laughs> with bubbles coming up. <laughs> <laughs> right, Harry, I don't know if he's already got experience of Her Majesty's pleasure. Hope not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Any ideas over there? Well, one, aren't we? I think the answer might be uh, Wayne Rooney, Richard. Uh, yeah, he coped really well because he wouldn't understand he was in prison for years. <laughs> uh, well, I think, I think Chewbacca's obviously, he'd be fine in prison. He doesn't you really want for very much, does he? OK, Dave, who do you think? Who would cope best in prison? Uh, Prince Harry, just looking at that, the way he's the pause there, he'd do very well in prison. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, so who are you going to go with? Team? Uh, I don't know what that is going in Sherry Blur's mouth, but I'm sure it belongs to Chewbacca. <laughs> um, I'll, go, I'll go Rooney. Well, Wayne Rooney got 23% of the vote, but uh, Chewbacca the Wookiee got 32%. Oh, <laughs> we asked the public, who would you trust to perform heart bypass surgery on you? Who got the most votes? Sean? Well, would any of them do it, you're going to die, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> because... It's not something that's got a bit of a knack to it, is it? Um, <laughs> that's why they've never had a faking it, where they take a scaffold and go, three weeks' time. <laughs> pope. The Pope. Pope, miracle, miracle healing, you know? Miracle. Laying on of hands, yeah, fixed, yeah. sorted. Good bedside manner, probably. OK, the Pope. Dave, what do you think? Driving past Manchester Royal Infirmary the other day, they had a sign that said, this hospital has car thieves operating. <laughs> <laughs> go for Wayne Rooney, then. <laughs> no, I just... Charlie Hospital is, is further down the list of my Australia for me and has guard dogs operating, which is a big worry for me. I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm having this bone afterwards. Um, <laughs> <laughs> any, any ideas, lads? I'd go for the Pope. I like the idea of the They've Pope. They've gone for the Pope. No, he can't. Oh, right, but there's a reason I say the Pope, because if he, if he did it on me, right, and he killed me, then he'd get accused of killing me, which is exactly what happened when the, the other Pope died. I got accused of killing him. Ah. Because I came home, hit the button on the remote control, and the man on the news said, if you've just turned your televisions on, the Pope is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry Blair. I can tell you, Sherry Blair was the second highest answer with 28%, but the Pope won it with 41%. Yay. At the end of that round, Sean's team have 11 points and Dave's team have 4 points. is the name of our final round. I'm going to give the teams a series of opinion polls and it's up to them to buzz in and tell me what or who they think came top. Here's your first one. Most disappointing holiday destination. Leatherhead. <laughs> Costa Delamitri. <laughs> Lovely. Oh. Is it 
of Dusseldorf. It's well, not. We see, you know, the EasyJet have those flights on um, Ryanair to Dusseldorf. And you think, why would you want to go? And if you say, I'm taking you on a romantic weekend, where to? Dusseldorf. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's anywhere where England's Barmy Army are when, when you get there. Spain, especially, because I don't know if you've been there when there's been a football match on, and they're all on, on the streets going, Champion is Champion. And all the Spanish are going, that's mushrooms. <laughs> OK, come on, most disappointing, it's between uh, Spain and France. Andorra is between Spain and France. Andorra is the no. correct answer. <laughs> the most disappointing holiday destination. This is from a That's Life magazine survey from last year. Most frequently told lie. Simon. It's been great to have you on the show. <laughs> I must have downloaded it by accident. <laughs> it could be you. <laughs> or is it, I won't come on your cat. <laughs> <laughs> Most frequently told. <laughs> it's more obvious than that. It's, so, it's something that is often said by men to, uh, to women. Like a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, something like... You know you, you don't look fat in that. Yeah. You are exactly yeah. right. The yeah. most frequently told lies yeah. you don't look fat in that. Well done, that's good. Good. <laughs> If you look, we've got the top ten here. It's of course you don't look fat is number one. These were only ten pounds. <laughs> Second most the bus was late, I've got a headache, I've only had one drink, that dress looks good on you. Uh, the check's in the post, you look ten years younger, you're wonderful in bed, and I love you. I think over the course of one weekend I've used all of those. <laughs> This is from a poll by Yours magazine from last year. Uh, hardest thing to open? A spearmint rhino in Kabul. <laughs> well, I think there's a market for it, I'll be honest. Yep. You go in there, pay your money, oh, she's got beautiful eyes. <laughs> is it the uh, front door when you need a poo? <laughs> <laughs> I, shall, I, I shall tell you, the, the, uh, surprisingly, the most difficult thing to open is not a West End musical, it is, in fact, bleach bottles. But considering the fact that kids can't get into an orange, why are we worrying? <laughs> <laughs> that sound tells me that it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Dave's team have seven points, but winning tonight, Sean's team with 14 points. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and, of course, all the people we held up in the high street asking stupid questions. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>